Continuing the theme, one of the we published uh, uh, we published uh, the handbook of the Irish Revival, uh, which is on sale by the way outside uh, outside the foyer at a good price. But we, we, it came out of the first symposium, and conversations I had with Declan Kybert were around uh, notion of cultural resistance and and uh, how would I find and how would I look for 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 traces of this in in, in various parts of the world and. A colleague of Ray Dolphin's, uh, Hayat Abu Saleh, that convinced me, forced me to go uh, and see her, 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 where she was from, in a place called Mejal Shams, which is in the occupied Golan. So we took this journey uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and we travelled north uh, along, along the West Bank, along watching Jordan to our right-hand side, and. Uh, Palestine, West Bank, and Israel to, to the left, and uh, it's an extraordinary journey. It took hours and hours and hours, and I ended up in a, in a place that I thought was Israel, or that I thought was uh, West Bank. Uh, I was terribly confused about the the, the 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 overall politics of it, the geographic politics of it rather. And I spent an extraordinary three days amongst the Druze community, uh, living and eating with them, and and socialising with them, and. Uh, I went, uh, I, uh, I realized how close Damascus was to the occupied Golan, to Mejal Shams, and I saw uh, Lebanon, and, and it was an extraordinary moment for me. And, and of course, I spent a lot of time with our next guest, and our next guest uh, is an extraordinary man, uh, and uh, in my view, uh, has a spirit of Horace Plunkett and the spirit of all the. Uh, uh, both from the poetic and from the cooperative movement, uh, uh, in that he established a medical centre, an extraordinary medical centre for his community in the occupied uh, Golan. And underneath the medical centre, he built a theatre, uh, which just double founded me. And uh, I met with local artists and local playwrights. And um, as a gesture to that and, and continuing our own interrogation of, of commemoration and centenary. Uh, for the first time, the Abbey Theatre will present uh, a play in Arabic called The New Middle East, and we are deliberately programming this play during Easter week of, 1916, of 2016 uh, as a kind of reminder for ourselves that there are other communities who are expressing their identity, expressing their resistance through, uh, through culture, through peaceful means. And so, um, New Middle East by Mutaz Abu Saleh, who, who I also met, uh, will be on uh, from the 30th of March to the 2nd of April. And it's only the second time they have performed this play outside of, uh, outside of their communities. Uh, they went to Belgium last year and they're coming to Dublin uh, for those four performances. So, without further ado, I will want to invite and welcome Tazir Murray onto the Abbey stage. Tazir. Thank you, Fia, for inviting me to this important symposium. Uh, basically, let us start with the good news. <laughs> Not everything in the Middle East is only fighting and uh, uh, really uh, resisting. Uh, you know, behind, under the theater that we have, we have the clinic, we have the theater, also we have the music center. So we try to combine lots of different things. Uh, also, uh, in April, it will be our seventh year that we make a children theater festival, so that we bring all the schools in Golan Heights to see the theater and to try to really to create the culture of theater in our area. But before I start speaking about the theater and about our cultural resistance, I would like to make some kind of introduction about Golan Heights, because I guess that lots of the people in, in, in this area, they don't know where's, uh, where's Golan Heights. Oops. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk uh, uh, about uh, what has happened in, in, after 1967 in Golan Heights. I'll speak a little bit about our organization and what we are doing in the organization and to try to bring you to the, uh, uh, really our method of resisting the Israeli occupation. Uh, is there a pointer? Yeah. Uh, basically, people uh, in 1967, Israel occupied Sinai from, from Egypt, the Gaza Strip, and West Bank. And this is the Syrian land which was occupied, which called Golan Heights. Uh, 
the Israelis on the time, they say that they have to go to wars and to fight because of their security. One question is, is security uh, achieved by war or security is achieved by peace? Also, the Israelis at the time, they put a condition in order to have any kind of negotiation. They want security, then they want to go to negotiation. The question also, again, is the security uh, the outcome of the peace negotiation or it's the condition to have a peace negotiation? Um, my colleague before, they spoke about the water in, in Gaza and the shortage of water. Also, the access, the, the access of water, also the big amount of water in Golan Heights was one of the problems because uh, the Israelis at the time, they claim that they occupied Golan Heights because of security reasons, because the Syrians used to attack from, from Golan Heights, which is not true. We can see that uh, even before the establishment of Israel, even 1919, uh, the Israelis, they, uh, the Zionist movement at that time, they put Golan Heights as part of the ambition of the uh, Zionist movement in, in the Middle East. Uh, and why the Israelis at the time, they wanted Golan Heights, those, if, you, if you go now to our area, you will find lots of snow. Just uh, this today, today the storm of snow will arrive, which means that we have lots of water in, in Golan Heights. And to show you, this is Golan Heights. We have about 1,500 millimeters of rain every, every year. And in the south of Israel, it's about 35 millimeters. And this is one of the reasons that the Israelis all the time wanted to control uh, Golan Heights and uh, uh, South Lebanon. Surely we have lots of waterfalls and nice uh, 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 places and water in Gulan. Uh, also, when you listen to the Israeli story, they will say that we came to an area with no people. And this, you can see the facts. Uh, Gulan Heights, it's about 1,200 uh, uh, square kilometers, about three, th three times the size of Gaza. Before, 19, before 1967, there has been 130,000 people. After the occupation, we, remon we remained only 6,396. Uh, uh, More than 200 villages and towns were destroyed by the Israelis. Uh, yeah, this is a map of Golan Heights. You can see this is Tiberias. This is Israel. We have Lebanon, Syria, and Egypt. This is before and after the occupation. You can see all these villages completely shaved by, uh, uh, by the Israelis. Surely we suffer of lots, lots of different uh, problems. What you see, this is in my village. Anyone visited the village, you can see the minefields less than one meter away from our houses. And in this case, there is some kind of fence, but in lots of places, I mean, it's open area that children could go inside and, and play. Uh, we have lost more than 66 people were killed by these mines and other Israeli leftovers. About 70 people were wounded. Uh, surely the Israelis also, against all the international conventions and agreements, have been using all the wealth of Golan Heights, if it's tourism, uh, as I said, if it's uh, tourism, water, uh, agriculture, all these things uh, are used by the Israelis. These days also, the last two years, because of the civil war in, in Syria, the Israelis start digging for oil and gas in, in, in the south of Golan Heights, and the companies announced that they have really big amount of oil in, in the south of Golan Heights. Uh, with all these facts, I mean, uh, we faced uh, a problem how we really we should uh, uh, deal with the, with the Israelis. So uh, after about more than 15 years under the Israeli occupation, we came to the conclusion that we are facing long-term occupation, especially after 1990 when, when all the peace between Syria and Israel uh, didn't work. We knew that the Israelis are going really to stay for a longer period. And occupation is not only a political issue. The, the occupation is trying to destroy our culture, our national belonging, everything in, in our life. And the idea was how we really we can build long-term uh, 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 resistance for the uh, Israeli occupation. And we came to the conclusion that really we have to empower our society because we believe that if we manage to create good health, good economy, uh, also good environment uh, uh, to increase the awareness of our people. This is the best way of resisting the Israelis, is to focus on our community and to pelt our people by our hands. And this was our, our strategy. Uh, surely, I mean, we, we looked at the needs of, of our people. Uh, so our organization is working with lots of different issues. We have the health uh, uh, issues that we really, we, we, now we provide most of the health services to our people. And believe me that we start, after almost 20 years of activity, we have one of the best health services 
all over the area if I want to include Golan in, 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 uh, in Israel. So one of the indicators of health issues is how many population you have per physician job. In Israel, we are speaking about 1,600. In, in Europe, we are speaking about 1,200. In Golan Heights, now we have 800 people for one physician job. This is one of the outcome of, of our uh, uh, organization. Surely also, we, we did lots of activity in music, painting, sculpturing, theater, all these things. We start really to build all this activity because, again, uh, we believe that if we work on all these things and we create the, the culture of, of resistance, uh, it, it will be really the way to resist the Israeli uh, occupation. And this is what makes the Israelis feel very angry. They try to stop us in different ways, but the opposite, we try to create lots of connection even with the, with the uh, Israelis. Lots of our doctors, they are working in, inside Israel. Our theater also, we perform even for, for, for uh, uh, the Israelis. Uh, we did lots of uh, this, some of our activity. You can see summer camps for our children that we focus uh, on, on, not only on political issues, again, we try to increase the awareness for environmental issues, for women issues, for lots of cultural and social issues in, 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 uh, in Gulag. Uh, also, we, we created kindergartens that you can see uh, how we really try to uh, uh, increase the awareness of our children. Uh, also, we do lots of activity in, in art and painting and all these things. We also, we have lots of uh, uh, artists. Every year, also, we have uh, one month of uh, uh, art uh, uh, conferences and, and seminars and artists for coming from all over Israel and also from Golan Heights. And they make sculptures and keep them in Golan because we want to make the area look uh, uh, nicer. Uh, yeah, the theater basically is one of the very successful projects. It's almost 15 years old project. We have produced more than uh, 35 plays. Uh, as Fia said, that one of them will be here. We all now we presented also in Belgium and other places. Uh, one of the outcoming really of this that we have now a theater in our schools. As I said, we have uh, 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 every year we have uh, two festivals, one for the children and one for the adults, and people come. Uh, as I said, now our, our area is about, we have about 20,000 people. We have uh, one month of uh, theater festival that about 2,000 people coming to see our theater. Uh, which has really uh, created a very big change and, and really established the, the culture of theater in, in Gulan. Uh, as, as, as one of the results of our activity also, lots of our young people now they are studying or they finish studying theater and also they are working, some of them even in Italy. We have two people from Gulan working in Italy in the theater, also in, 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 uh, inside Israel. Basically, if, if I look at all this, uh, uh, just to summarize, I think that uh, uh, our, our philosophy was to focus on our, our uh, population and try to create the awareness and to focus and, and empower our, our society. And if this makes the Israelis feel angry, I mean, this is their problem. We are not working against others. We are working to develop our society and our, our community. This is basically what we do in very short uh, time. I hope that I uh, gave a clear picture. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tazir. You're welcome. So um, I'll just ask Tazir one question, and then if I, I, I'm going to take three questions from the audience for Tazir. Um, keep them brief, and, and we'll answer them, and then we'll, 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 uh, we'll keep everything, everything on time. So I'm going to ask <coughs> some of the stupid questions. Um, <coughs> what is your nationality? OK. Uh, you know, we are Syrians under the Israeli occupation, but because of practical reasons, we don't have any access to Syria and we did not have since 1967. Uh, these days, I mean, we don't, according to the Israelis, we are seen as permanent residents of Israel, but we are not citizens. In 1981, the Israelis annexed Golan Heights, and they declared as if Golan is part of Israel. The people in Golan, we refused. We had also demonstrations, and we resisted all the Israeli annexation. And the in-between solution was that we carry now Israeli IDs, but we don't have passports. So uh, according to the Israelis, we are stateless. And the extraordinary thing culturally is that, which I uh, forgive my ignorance, when I, when I spent time in, in your village, you, you, looked, you looked to Damascus. The, Damascus seems to be your cultural center focus, or was, uh, particularly with relations. And, and, uh, and, and so 
describe to me the occasion when, when the barrier, when the, the annual visit of your of relations coming from Damascus to the uh, to the fence, and uh, explain that to our audience. Yeah, basically, my village is exactly on the ceasefire line. I mean, it's this, the the fence that separates us from our country is less than 10 meters away from our houses. And uh, one of the ways that used to communicate between each other, people from, from uh, because part of our people from this, from our villages, they remained on the other side of, of the ceasefire line. So every house has family, has brothers and sisters on the other side that we have never seen them since 1967. Personally, I have three brothers that they remained in, in Syria that I grew up under the Israeli occupation. I have never met my, my brothers all my life. Uh, so people used to come there and we use uh, loudspeakers to communicate with each other. It's about three, four hundred meters that separates us and we talk to, to, to each other. Uh, because we cannot really have any contact with, uh, with our people in Syria, so uh, we used to create uh, uh, contacts with the Palestinians in the West Bank, also inside Israel, and also with all the democrat democratic forces inside, inside Israel. Thank you, Tazir. So I'll just open up, uh, say, three questions, if uh, any our audience would like to ask about, about the peaceful culture resistance. So the, the Roni is down here. Uh, anybody else would like to ask a question? Okay. And there's this, this, Aoife, there's a gentleman at the back there, uh, Roni, and then there's, there's a gentleman in front, and that's the three questions, yeah. Thanks very much for a very invigorating presentation, and I'm delighted you're engaging in the resistance that you are. But I want to ask you about Druze identity. Uh, because the Druze, as we know, in, uh, in Palestine or Israel itself, are playing or have supposedly an alliance with Israelis through serving in the army. Yet we know that there's quite a lot of Druze resistance within Israel itself. Could you perhaps say something about that? Yeah, it, it's... We'll we, we get to three questions and then we'll answer. Yeah. So the second question. Yeah, I just, <coughs> excuse me, I just wonder what do you need, um, as somebody engaged in the work that you're doing, what do you need from the international community? What kind of supports do you need? Thank you. And then the final question, Jeff, up here, yeah. I was interested, during your talk, you made reference to inviting artists from Israel sometimes and con communicating with them. I'm just wondering, would, would this be a part of your resistance that, in fact, you appeal to what we hope would be more liberal thinking Israelis um, about your rights. Thank you. So, for the first question uh, yeah. on the Druze community. Uh. Okay, uh, first of all, the Druze, I mean, we are, par we are within the Islamic frame. I mean, we are not in the middle of Islam, we are one of the extreme uh, groups in Islam. But the Israelis, they are trying to use it as if we are a nation, because they want to justify uh, what they think that as if the Jews they are a nation. I mean, this you know, they, if the Jews they are a nation, they want to build a state for the nation. Uh, uh, we don't believe uh, that, I mean, we are a group of Islam, we are, uh, we are not a nation. So, so the Israelis that they are inside Israel, they are serving the Israeli army. But the, 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 the Druze in Lebanon, for example, and in Syria, they are part of the Syrian, they are serving the Syrian army. Uh, the Druze, they, had, they tried to create so-called the Druze state, again, for lots of political reasons. Uh, but again, I mean, we are, we are uh, part of the mosaic of, of different groups in, in, uh, in the Middle East. And uh, so the Israeli, the Druze inside Israel, uh, uh, they are uh, serving in the Israeli army, but they, we in Golan Heights, we used to serve in the Syrian army when we were under the Syrian we were part of Syria, but now we don't serve in in, uh, uh, in the in the army. Uh, concerning so there's a, there's a Druze community in, in in the occupied Golan, and there's a Druze community in central Israel. Is that right? Yes. And that's I think Roni, that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. There there's two different groups. The the Druze inside Israel, they are they are Israeli. They have the Israeli citizenship, and again for lots of political reasons, they serve in the Israeli army. But not only the Druze. Uh, serve in the Israeli army. Also, there are some Christians and Muslims that, that they serve in, in, uh, in the Israeli army. Okay, so the second question is around what can the international community do to support your cultural resistance? Uh, our philosophy to be more self-depending. Surely we are not against cooperation and working together with lots of groups all over, all over the world, but I think that uh, the best thing that all of us work for peace and just 
all over the world. I mean, surely we can, we can exchange, and I th as I said, and we can work together. But one of the good things, uh, which is ironic, that the international community forget about, about Golan Heights. We didn't have the United Nations uh, organizations coming to support us. And this is what has learned us to be, to stand on our feet and fight for our, for our people. Which is, I mean, again, an ironic perspective. It's, it was something positive. Uh, but sure, I think that uh, you are invited to come to visit Golan Heights and uh, we can cooperate. And as what, what we see here, that our theater will, will come here. And also we have cooperation with lots of organizations all over the world. And then the final question, your interaction with Israel, your interaction with, with uh, you, you travel, your, your, the plays go uh, over uh, and, uh, throughout Israel. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, we don't hate the Israelis as individuals. We hate the Israeli occupation, we hate the Israeli policy, we hate the Israeli system. Uh, there's lots of good Israelis that we try really to work together and, and to develop things together. So our theater is, uh, we play, uh, we, we perform in inside Israel. We, we had performed in Haifa University and other theaters, especially in the Arab sector. Uh, but also, I mean, we, we, we want to be pragmatic and uh, we see the, the, the Israelis as part of the Middle East and we are ready to cooperate with them. But as I said, we are against the occupation and we are not against the Israelis themselves. We are working for uh, getting justice in the Middle East for everyone, not only for the Arabs, not only for the Israelis, but for all the sites in, in the Middle East. And you cannot get justice if you don't end the occupation and uh, continue with, this, uh, with the Israeli policy. Thank you. Just give him a warm welcome and hope to see you at the show, Middle East. Thank you.